Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com, and we are continuing on with third dimensional processing versus two dimensional. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. This is, should be video number seven. Hopefully, I got that right. So let me finish the story with, with Pastor Danny. So I was there for eight years ago in the same church. And, uh, we actually arrived at that church at the same month. I moved back home, and he was the new pastor. And um, people kind of were, you know, it's like I was there every day. I, I went to morning service, afternoon service on Sunday, and usually I go to evening service, and I was going to a Bible study group. So I was at church four days a week. And then sometimes I would just drop by and hang out with Pastor Kenny for a while, okay? He was a big part of my life back then. So he had noticed something. Um, oh yeah, the other thing is after church, we after after the afternoon uh, service, we would have like a, a gathering. You know, people would bring like salad and chicken and beans and rice and desserts and drinks and sodas. And they had a basketball thing. That they would play hoop. And so it was just like a gathering. Now we're eating and talking. And he asked some people, um, I was talking to Pastor Ganey and, and this couple came up. I think they just, they were a young couple, they just got married. And he goes, hey, you guys know Mike Colleen? And I'm like, no. It's like, really? Haven't you been going to this church for like a year? Like, yeah. Have you ever seen him? No. And I was always there. I was always in church. I wasn't hiding. I wasn't like in the back over there. And I, I engaged with people. It was a really weird thing. Uh, and especially the fact that I would always go to Bible study because that was a smaller group of probably 30 people or 40 maybe, something like that. And and then another uh, little bit older people came up and hit the same thing. They didn't know who I was and all and all. And kind of like, that's weird, you know. And it happened again and again and again the next Sunday, the next Sunday, and so on. And finally, he goes, Mike, I want, oh, he goes, I want you to be here next Sunday. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm not like I'm going to miss. And... <clears throat> He had, in the middle of the sermon, out of nowhere, he goes, I'm going to stop the sermon right now because I, I want to, he didn't say I want to make an announcement, but he, I forget what he, how he explained it. And he goes, Mike, Mike Colleen, are you here? And I didn't hear him the first couple times. And, and the guy, the only guy that knew me was Ricky. He just met me and we always sat in the back. And, and he was in kickboxing. That's where we actually met. Um, and I was a national, I was ranked number one in the nation at the time. Excuse me. Ranked number one in the United States of kickboxing. And Ricky knew me. He was really impressed with me and seen me spar. I sparred with Ricky quite a few times. And um, <clears throat> Pastor Ganey goes, does anyone here other than, because Ricky, or anyone like, other than people that go to work with, but no one else did. It was just Ricky. And does anyone here know who Mike Colleen is? Because other than you, Ricky, because I know you trained with him. He's under there. And, and so Ricky had bumped me because he's talking about you. I'm like, what? And I'm like, is Mike Colleen here? And I, and I raised my hand. He goes, Mike, you here? And he finally goes, you know, stand up if you're here. And I stood up, and, and I don't know why he couldn't see me, but well, he was older, so maybe his eyesight. But it was a big church. So he had me, and then he goes, stand up on the pew. So I'm, and I'm like, really? So I stood up on the, the, the bench or whatever you call it. And I'm standing up there going, what in the fuck is this? Because <laughs> he was pretty adamant, like, get up, get up. I'm like, okay. I'm like, you know, I was a young guy in my 20s. And he goes, <laughs> Does anyone know who this guy is? And everyone's like, no. <laughs> Not one fucking person. I've been going to that church four, four days a week, plus meeting Pastor Gator on Mondays, hanging out for a couple hours, having lunch and stuff with him. Not one fucking person knew me. And I interacted with everybody, which was a really weird thing. It was just like, and he goes, does anyone here know what he does? What he's, what, he used the word famous. I wouldn't say I was famous because I was like some world champion or something like that. But in, in, in town, I was famous in, the, in that local area. Was so, you know, people would come up and ask me for my signature, which is cool. Impressed the hell out of my girlfriend. But um, everyone's just like, nope, nope. He's ranked no one in the nation of kickboxing right now. He's been going to this church since I, the very first month I got here. Mike Colleen was the first person I met. He's here every Sunday morning, every Sunday afternoon, nine out of ten times he's there on Sunday evening church. And he also goes to Bible study and he comes out and helps around the church all the time, blah, 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 blah. He goes, and there's not one person, I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of you. Well, 
So he he told people to make a point to, to after the service because we did the basketball eating thing afterwards for lunch, right? And for the church gathering, and people came up and tried to talk to me, but you could tell it. And the thing was, I was like, you know, me and Ricky goofed around, and Ricky was a, a professional guy, he was a good guy, and very clean. You know, we're, you know, we're fa- fairly well dressed, dressed, I would say. And you could just tell, like, they didn't feel comfortable with me. And I didn't figure it out for for more than a decade. Many, it was part of this whole narcissistic thing. Like the thing that I became really well, I became aware of this when I went through my awakening. I was twenty eight, and I think this was after my awakening. No, it was just before. That's right. It was the year before. There are spiritual people, and there are rules and structure people. And this is religion. Religion is do as you're told, here's the rules, don't sin, or you're going to hell. Right? That kind of shit. God's not God doesn't hate you. But God loves you very much. I promise you that. I'm gonna talk about original sin. That might be the next video. No, good in this video. And so that was kind of a tough lesson in my life. I actually left the church because of that, because you could tell like uh every Sunday they would try to meet me and the Never made any friends, and this was about a year. I think yeah, I think a year had gone by, and it's like I'm done. Like I just like this is like I, I started to realize like I'm not one of them. I wasn't really clear. It was like I didn't, I couldn't really put it into words like I can now. But I knew like I'm this and they're that, and they don't want to have nothing to do with me. The last church was like that too. The, the pastor loved me at that church, Pastor Rex. Uh, he embraced me. He made me an associate. Actually, the elders uh, voted me in, and but the people in the pews just like can relate to me i was too spiritual basically okay so there's a difference between spiritual people and religious people all right so let's go back to the slaughtering of the animals and the ultimate sacrifice well yeah this is going to be perfect i'm going to watch this all right so it got to a point where they were slaughtering the animals and and the the priest or the rat now what were they called back then Maybe they, maybe they were called priests. I don't, I don't think they're called like Sadducees. And I forget what they All the Sadducees, Pharisees, Sadducees, and something else. Well, I'm going to call them priests. They were slaughtering the animals for this sacrifice, for this sin, for that sin. for like All of a sudden, after chapter 3, the book of Genesis, when they ate of the, the uh, fruit, what, what Satan or the serpent said, and the narcissist said, Oh, surely this will make you like a god, right? Mm -mm. It did the opposite. It closed them. It disconnected them. It put them in the in the two dimension. When I was talking in the last video, when Pastor X, you know, because Pastor X was like, you know, Adam and Eve were were, were basically could communicate to God. Every they were like they were in the garden every morning with God, like every every day. And if you remember from if you've been following this video series, I, I talk about. Chapter in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 25, it says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. It's right there. Look it up yourself, by the way. This is the King James Version. Oh, come on. Come on. There. All right. And they were not ashamed and then after the eight of the fruit it says in verse seven so chapter three book of genesis chapter three verse seven and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons because they were trying to hide themselves and then it goes on okay i'm gonna read the next one verse eight and and they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his and, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. He was afraid. So important. Because I was naked and I hid myself. So what did they really do? They didn't just hide themselves clothes wise, but they came out of the right brain. And what they also did was they went narrow like this, which shoves you over left. It's like closing a door. And now you're disconnected from spirit. And that's what it means when it says, and they hid themselves from the Lord God. 
Okay, when you're in the presence of God, you're in your five senses, you're in your right brain, you're internal, you're in the present moment, and you you have a greater awareness. Those people can tune in and get a gut feeling of what they should and shouldn't do, right? Based on their own values, which is what it should be based on, unless you got some messed up values. Okay, so so then came along. So that was the ultimate sin. The ultimate sin you want to know what really is? There's an artery in the lower reptilian brain. When that artery narrows, blood stops going to the larger human brain, especially the right brain. So the right brain shuts completely down. That's your spiritual brain. So, Michael, what would cause that brain to shut down? Any kind of negative state such as fear. All of them are fear. There's two, there's two main states. There's love and there's fear, right? You tell me which is which. Peace. What would that go under, love or fear? Love. Uh, anxiety, that goes under fear. Um, health, love. Um, joy, love. Happiness, love. Peace, love. Calm, love. Anxiety, stress, uh, fear. Um, I don't even want to do the fear states because it'll bring up negative emotions. I'm going to keep it really positive. So the point I'm trying to say overall is a narcissist does everything in their power to cause a lot of the, the, okay what what does chaos go under goes under fear all of those things will close the artery that's my point when you disconnect from the right brain now you're not conscious you're not in the presence of the lord you're hiding from god and right there what is the ultimate sin we just hid from god that's the ultimate sin that's what now, once you do that, what, what, what does it force you to do? It forces you to operate from the reptilian brain or the logical brain, which is about rules, structure, and organization. Jesus says love is the fulfillment of all the commands. What does love do to this? Opens it wide open, baby. And now you're opening your right brain again. These are the things that I will teach you how to do in my course, in my one-on-one coaching, okay? So I, I don't want to get off that. I want to stay on this. This is important because we're, we're really hitting it right now. Why do you think we sing hymns in church? Because it calms us down, opens us up. When I became more and more conscious as I was meditating, I noticed every time I left church, I just felt... I felt good. I just felt good about I felt good about myself. That is the goal. Now let's go back to when I said, where's God? It was in the last video, I believe. It might have been this video. I think it was the last video. I said, ready, point. Every man points out there and every woman automatically goes like this, but they stop. Then they point out. Because they learned that that's what was taught in churches. Our Western churches have been very male-dominated and very left brain because of that, which is external. Does Jesus not clearly say the body is the temple of the Lord? Does Jesus not clearly say, look within? Does Jesus not clearly say the Lord resides within the temple? Hello, McFly. Women are correct when they point to themselves because the spirit of God comes inside all of us when you open up to him and invite him in. And that's how I woke up. All right. So let me wrap it up with a slaughtering of all the animals that I started about three or four uh, videos ago. They were slaughtering all these animals. It used to be one animal for a year to, to forgive all the tribe of all their sins. Wait, but stop. What do you mean their sins? There's only one sin. And that's the ultimate sin when the artery closes and you hide from God. That is the ultimate sin. Everything else is made up. It, right here. It says, after Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, it says in verse 5. Sorry, the lighting is not too... I know it looks bright on there, but it's actually kind of dim here. And did eat, and husband, and the eyes of them both were open and they knew, they knew, K-N-E-W, they were naked. And so they sewed fig leaves to hide themselves. 
And then it says in the next verse, chapter 8, God came in the garden, which I've repeated a million times. And it says, Ad, and it said, Adam and Eve, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. And God called out to Adam, you were out there. And Adam uh, said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. I was afraid. That's what narcissists do to you. They make you afraid. So the artery closes. And I hid. This is Adam. And then let's go back to uh, verse uh, chap chapter 2, verse 25. When God made pulled the rib out of Adam and made Eve, and the final verse 25 says, right after the that, it says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why would they write, and they were not ashamed in there? Because they want you to understand something as you read this. Well, now they're so ashamed, they cover themselves up with clothes, and they're hiding from God. Shame was made up. Shame was, someone said, oh, the color yellow is bad and therefore you should be ashamed. You should never wear the color yellow or have the color yellow in your house anywhere. I've got actually got color some over there I'm looking in on the, paint, the picture right here. So it's a made up rule. So now let's go back to Tesla's song which says, time, time, no signs, signs everywhere, signs rocking and reeling. Da, 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 da. It was a song that I put in the last video where this when they were kids, they used to go up and over this hill on this path and they'd make it to school or to downtown and they'd come back after school or after work or whatever. And they'd been doing this for like 25 years or 30 years. And then one day they go to walk the same path. They've always walked since the day they were born. Somebody put up a fence and put up some signs and said, it's against the law. I made up a rule. You can't cross this path no more. Right? They started making stuff up is what I'm saying. All right. I do agree. The left brain has its purpose. Now watch this. Oh, this is good. I hope you guys are still with me. So let's go back to chapter 2, verse 17. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil, let's see, I think it's, uh, thou shalt not eat it for in the day that, right here, thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good and that man should be alone. Oh no, now he's going to Adam. I will make him a help me. Okay. So you shall surely die. Well, here's the thing. Satan convinced them that it was going to make them open and I think like a god. And this is in chapter 3, verse 5. Your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When Adam and Eve ate of that, it made them shut down. It made that artery. They, they literally it put them in a state of fear, which again is what narcissists want you to do because then you can't process on the higher level. Okay, sorry this is so complicated. It's, but it's really not. It's like, and it says, and they hid themselves. And Adam said, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. It says right there, verse ten. So fear closes the artery. When you walk out of church and you sing hymns and you talk about peaceful stuff, the artery opens up. And I, I remember walking out of church one day. And I was very conscious after, because I've been meditating and doing consciousness where I was like, wow, I feel so peaceful. I felt really good about myself. And I was like, wow. And I noticed like about two or three days later, I feel like shit. Because I, I lived with a narcissist family and they just beat me down. They never went to church. They hated church. They wouldn't go. They all loved Pastor Ganey, but they didn't want to go to church. So, well, they appeared to love Pastor Ganey anyways. So, I'm trying to explain this even better. I think you guys get the point. I don't want to kind of lose my momentum here. I mean, all right. So let's go back to verse 17, chapter two. So it was called the tree of knowledge. Again, knowledge, right? Good and evil, either or. Okay, now I know what I'm saying. Okay, I got it. All right. So when you think in the two dimensional, either or, which is length and width, right? When you pop up to this, the third dimension, and you're, you're processing in a higher level, it's like, all right, here's the best way, the best way to do it. Most people look at the world like there's one fucking pie. That's it. And I got to get my fair piece. That's this. That's this thinking. 
And people on that level, you couldn't convince them otherwise. There's, there's nothing. There. It's, it's like you're, you're. It's like you would be asking a, a two-dimensional being who's lived on the two dimension, at least mentally, their whole lives, to understand a 3D concept which they can't see. It was just like a benef. He said, "I've lived here almost my whole life, and my whole life when I'd look at the mountains and the hills and the trees." All around me, he goes. It looked like it was like a painting, off in the, and it was flat, like a painting. I remember trying to explain this to him. He couldn't understand it. He's like, "Oh, he's like, okay, dude." And it wasn't until he popped open, and he he said it was like a one of those books you open up, and they they're called pop ups, and where like the characters pop up and the houses and the trees. That day, he he we we went to lunch, and he talked and he talked. He goes, "Oh my God." All this time when you were saying this stuff, I thought you meant this and you meant this, and it's like I couldn't even comprehend what you're saying, but I didn't know that. Um, now here, now watch this. When you're talking about, I, I hate to call it three dimensional things. Call it right. When you're talking about right brain things, I'm going to call it three dimensional. People in the two dimensional thing, they can't even hear you. Y- you can't even talk to them. They can't hear you, and they're not even trying to be jerks. They they don't process and they they process in either or fight or flight. It's it's all about it's、uh, it's reptilian. It's instinctual. It's fight or flight, give or take, or be taken of, kill or be killed. I either survive or I die. Either if you live, that means I die. If you're happy, that means I can't be happy. That that's how they process every conversation. So when you talk to narcissists, and you're not doing anything wrong, you're thinking good thoughts of them, and you're blessing them with money and food and, and good things, and they get all mad. You're like. The fuck are you mad about? It could be anything. Well, the only reason why you're being nice to me is because you're trying to act like you're better than me. Like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Man, I've heard some crazy shit, and they do, and they will find a way to explain away and justify and twist fucking. But here's the thing, though. You have to understand something. They're looking through this way of viewing life, and they, so they process this way. And it'd be just like me saying my, it's really bright and shiny where I'm at, and you're like, "What are you talking about? It's, it's hella dark." I'm like, "No, it's bright and shiny." And when I pull the sunglasses off, I'm like, "See how bright and shiny it is? And how colorful it is?" But when you got this on, you can't see that. So the narcissist literally thinks that you're lying to them, or you're trying to you're trying to pull the the wool over their eyes. Here's the problem: they've already pulled the wool over their own eyes. And it's a choice to live there, especially if you have met a consciousness coach like me that was working with you, and you fought it tooth and nail. At that, that at that point, that's a choice. They don't want to leave that place, so your best bet is to get away from them. So let me let me wrap it up with this. So and that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And here's the deal. All right. You know what? I'm gonna make it in the next video. This is gonna be awesome, and then I'll complete the the slaughter of the animals and the Jesus thing. See you in the next video. God bless you guys.